This video is sponsored by Gamer Subs. Use the link in the description or pinned comment to get 10% off your next order. God of War has been among my favorite franchises of games to exist. I've been playing them long before I should have, and will continue until Santa Monica stops making them. Ragnarok's Valhalla brings us back to Greece in some capacity, and I thought it'd be fun to bring together the OG trilogy that inspired it in the first place. So enjoy this video podcast style, watch it back, do whatever, because I know you're just like me, rewatch videos and love listening to them in the background. Thank you guys for another great year on this channel. I'm so excited to keep covering more games and growing this Gaming Wins team that we got going on here. Enjoy the video, guys. Right away, one of the most iconic themes of the sixth console generation was born. It's such a hype theme that never got old throughout. The gods of Olympus. It's like transition from menu to end game, a theme that sticks in all mainline God of War games. One, two, three, 2018. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. It's not just me, right? The music here says, Kratos, right? Highest mountain in all of Greece. The narrator that we learned to later be Gaia's voice is so great, calming with a sense of great wisdom. Linda Hunt delivers with her performance. Death would be his escape from madness. Well, that's one way to hook our attention right from the get-go. Ooh, that text looks like blue flames, which is the color of fire when it's at its hottest, like the hatred Kratos has for Ares, but also mimics the waves of the Aegean Sea. God of War did many things that turned it into an instant classic. We aren't even two minutes into pressing play, and we've already got a great narrative hook with the mystery of his madness, and now thrown straight into combat. That classic status was something that Santa Monica explicitly hoped for with the first God of War, stating it many times in interviews. Sometimes speaking things into existence is true. And I really do love the combat of God of War games. I've heard some say it's just weak Ninja Gaiden or Devil May Cry, but I think it succeeds more than those games through its more straightforward approach and not being overly flashy. Don't get me wrong, God of War goes over the top with spectacle, but with just the combat, it's very easy to follow and know exactly what's going on at all times, which is why I believe the game broke into the mainstream as much as it did. It's the little things that bring a whole package together. In production, this scene was a static camera showing them breakthrough. Just by adding those two camera shakes, it makes these soldiers a lot more threatening and the world feel more alive. I kind of miss health chests in games. It was a very specific balancing tool where you could really screw yourself if you didn't take them at the right moment. I remember being in God of War Ascension stuck on the trial of Archimedes, not having my checkpoint put me at full health. Let's just say 13 year old me might have thrown a controller or two. And beyond that, this is why there are many enemy types that give you health or mana when you execute them. It allows us another source of resources that we can draw from mid combat and gives us something more to think about. Taking care to not kill them outright and I know you understand that feeling of your health blinking red and finally seeing that red circle pop up knowing you've got some more fight left. In classic God of War fashion, we are treated to a giant boss fight kicking off our game. Something that God of War 2018 deliberately did the opposite of, as there they're trying to highlight the tone of the game and the growth Kratos has gone through. Even being streamed, this game still holds up incredibly well. And I remember it looked amazing to me as a kid seeing it on a CRT screen. Here's a great example as to why, in a way, we remember these older games looking better than they do now. That blurriness from the CRT gave our brains some more wiggle room to fill in the gap and see a better image. But also, these games were specifically made to be viewed on a CRT, so the devs could art design around the way those kind of TVs present its images. As I've said before, I don't really mind QTs too much. I like the option to turn them off, but the way the combat is in God of War, they really do enhance the experience, allowing for that spectacle that God of War wants to be known for without creating a million different gameplay systems for it. You see, people see Kratos as a rage monster before God of War 2018, but I'll be defending that as he's not as we go on. First reason is the murder of innocents for their sweet, sweet green orbs. Now I'm gonna say he never did that in canon, and it's us, the player, that is rage-filled. Also, Santa Monica promotes us to do it to get health, so maybe it's actually them that's the rage monsters. So you're gonna notice the look of the blades and a lot of cutscenes are different many times, and that here in the opening level, they are most accurate for their final version. That's because the Aegean Sea was the final level made for this game. And this was because Santa Monica wanted to make sure they knew exactly what kind of game this was going to be to make sure their first level was the best opener possible. And why didn't they change the blades in the other cutscenes? Well, my younger viewers, back when developers shipped a game, they really couldn't be patched after launch, for one. And for two, God of War had a lot of time crunch when it came to producing the title. And, as always, budgetary concerns. The official design is obviously the one we see in the pre-rendered cutscenes, but I'm imagining having too many polygons on it created issues. 
there's a lot of interesting things that happen in development that the casual player would never have any idea about. Just chalk it up to inconsistency or in laziness. Gods came to me, told me their champion would come and rescue us from the Hydra. And just earlier we had a man scared out of his boots seeing the Ghost of Sparta. So obviously he isn't just some rabid dog that Ares sicked on his enemies all the time. Just most of the time. Kratos looked up before dodging that arrow like a sex symbol. Something I wouldn't even blink at in modern gaming. But back in 2005, every bit of animation is precious. Thanks, Corey Barlog, our future 2018 director. But all hope is lost, Spartan, even for you. Even for you. You didn't see that coming. <laughs> A mechanic that'll span God of War almost 20 years. Kratos, before you reach Athens, there is a task you must complete. So Kratos hasn't been tasked with the mission to go to Athens to defeat Ares. It is so... For far too long. Shit, how do I spin this to it? Uh, Kratos was already going there with his two lady loves for some r and since that's Athena City. Eh, I tried. Just a straight up plot hole. Even though the key does its obvious white sparkle that many other items do have in God of War, it's not super obnoxious like the others since it just seems like it's the gold reflecting. Save me. I just had to show all that. I love this opening mission and it's just straight up iconic. Plus the music never resolving and just upping the stakes with each pass to our button of Big Daddy Hydra yelling, easily up there as one of the best opening levels in gaming. Man, with how strong Kratos is, I'm amazed he was ever able to have a daughter. Like, how do you control that? And imagine the strength of the swimmers. What is up with God of War enemies and not swallowing their food? Thank the gods you came back for me. I didn't come back for you. Okay, fine. This one's pretty indefensible. But if we were to condone a man based on one action, where would any of us be today? I think this is subreddit for things that look like that. Don't put your Kratos in that or something. Like animals, the victims lay before him. A reminder of his own past. A past he could never escape. So this is the cruelty of Olympus in sheep's clothing. One could look at it as, as Kratos atoning for what he's done by way of casting retribution on those who enact what he's done. Or this mission was tasked by the gods to have Kratos constantly reminded of what he's done and not give him enough time to actually save these women and children as his eternal punishment. His only solace was the sea, endlessly sailing from one harbor to the next in service to the gods of Olympus. See what I'm saying? It wasn't a plot hole after all. Poseidon just knew where he was heading after the Hydra. For no matter how much wine he consumed or how many women he took to his bed, nothing on earth could rid him of the horrors that plagued his mind. So you have a man who sold his soul to a devil, tricked into killing his wife and child, then served the gods for 10 years with the false promise of nightmares he never would have committed to end. Kratos' rage, to me, has always been justifiable. And it's not that he's without his quieter moments either. Zeus has forbidden the gods from waging war on each other. That is why it must be you, Kratos. Ah, so the gods on Earth are just like the proxy wars we see in the modern era today. That's neat, I guess. Some things never change. In the visions, they will end. See? He's a genuinely distressed man just looking for his peace. I mean, the first time we see Kratos, he is so emotionally and mentally defeated, he jumps off a cliff. Where's the rage, huh? Huh? Where is it? Where? Athena! Oh, there it is. I do be cherry picking. So why the sex mini game? From Santa Monica, it's to hammer home the more animalistic qualities since game director David Jaffe constantly reduced him to such and his developer commentary. And also once again, that no amount of women can fill the hole left behind in his heart from his family. And like, rated M game got a rated M for some comedy, you know? I always relish fighting a Cyclops in Battle War Games. For the fun of the fight and spectacle? Oh, no, 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 no. I just always knew I was going to get so much blood money. Moments like these are why I love the fixed camera sometimes. This would be a completely different section if the angle was over the shoulder and not nearly as pleasing to the eye. There's a lot of care put into how it tracks Kratos to never feel intrusive and always give the best angle. This is most important in combat. God of War is a hack and slash game and has a lot of mobbing, so being able to see behind our character in the entire battlefield is very important to the flow and enjoyability of the combat. 
This is somewhat felt in God of War 2018 as a negative, as it could be easy to be overwhelmed, and you only have Mimir and the Red Lions to rely on to protect your back. On top of that, the devs having to code the enemies to trend to be in camera view, it's a whole different headache you have to deal with. Aphrodite. Kratos. Well, that's a neat nod to the mythology, since Aphrodite is the one that cursed Medusa into a Gorgon. And like, we're about to lay the Kratos smack down on her, and not the kind that rocked the boat, you know what I'm saying? The scale of the battle behind these rocks blew my socks off when I was a kid. And also, really clever to only show slivers of the battle to show this without going over the PS2's hardware budget. That's what I look like when I get out of the bed in the morning. And I bet that's what Kratos looked like and sounded like before getting off the boat, hey? <laughs> I love when you come back to a previous location to progress. This is why I love Dark Souls 1 so much. It also just feels better when it's mostly a linear game when this happens. Find my temple to the east. So you think Kratos was just trying to see if she was in physical form. I know he was just taking any opportunity for a titty grab. But what we saw earlier was just a tease, since Santa Monica knew they could show all this with Ares as the cherry on top. It's always great to see you whenever we've got to use our weapons and magic to complete a puzzle. If you've been around here long enough, you know I'm a sucker for big charge-up abilities that make you unstoppable. I freaking love it, and Wrath of the Gods does not disappoint, giving Kratos some spectral armor alongside these beautiful new animations and a nice pretty blue color we rarely see on the blades. Just f perfect. Seeing reflections done well in the PS2 era wasn't something you'd see very often. And even now, it looks great. It really adds to the regality of the museum-like room. Stay back! Get away from me! Can we just make this the new surprise Pikachu face? See? Kratos didn't kill her. She did that herself. Does he use her cold dead corpse to his advantage? Yeah, but we don't gotta worry about that. Anything that forces me to use my other tools than what just works for me is always welcome in my book. Go, go! Well, isn't that just a damn shame? But seriously, little things like this really help make this city feel under siege and the world feel alive. But also, like, being amongst all of this does a pretty good job, too. Comedy, huh? And something that older games always did a lot better was constantly introducing new enemy types and unique bosses to keep the gameplay spicy. I swear to the Allfather, if I have to fight 18 trolls in Ragnarok, I'm gonna punch boy. The rooftops and Cliffs of Madness are the two places where the game really opens up and lets you explore your own path, which are very welcome breaks from all the corridor walking you've been doing. Let's get across! Release the lever! Extend the bridge! Pull the lever, Crunk. I won't let them get me. They won't get across. These monsters! For a moment, I thought he was doing something noble, like protecting his friends. But no. He's a coward-ass that deserved that juice bolt to the face. I actually really like a nice little logic puzzle. Kid Me was stuck on this one for at least 30 minutes. And that's something I think we all loved in God of War. Sure, there are many puzzles that are quite simple, but there are some that really got me. Like this one and the one with the dragging of the blocks. Man, is this awkward knowing the plot of the next two games. <laughs> Thank you, Santa Monica, for the Wilhelm scream. The pullbacks of the camera to show his skill never gets old, and I will keep winning them, Sumi. Good, my boy. Good. So this is Zeus in the guise, and he dug an open grave to Hades to give Kratos his second chance when he fails to defeat Ares. And he called him my boy and my son, since Kratos is his son after all. Also, I had canon that without the help of Zeus in 1 and Gaia in 2, he never would have been able to escape Hades. So when he goes there in the 3rd, it's even more badass by, spoilers for God of War 3, just killing the ruler of the underworld and taking his soul, effectively becoming a Greek myth Grim Reaper. And to bring up combat and puzzles, we've got the platforming. And it's the holy trinity of gameplay that carries us through the game, making sure that we're always engaged and never bored. The 3D to 2D art of these cutscenes are beautifully done, way more interesting than if Santa Monica had just done one or the other. How much is enough, Kratos? When will it end? When the glory of Sparta is known throughout the world. And that's the main idea behind this game in the opening of the second. The separation of relationship between one's work and their family. What links will someone go to ensure their success in their work and how much they might be blinded because of it. Subtle, Santa Monica. Subtle. Another satisfying camera angle. An interesting thing that God of War tackled was how and when should a player be forced into combat. There's the easiest one still used here with the soul doors, but more interesting ones I'll talk about later. And these moments where you're forced to fight are bounced out by sections like these where the player can just run past everything, but will miss out on valuable gear and murder money, which is one of the things used to force a player to fight. More butthole looking like camera angles. Your journey begins here. You're telling me that the last two hours have been fluff? Typical of the gods. A really neat concept that relies on our ears to find our way through the sands. And this is the third way Santa Monica forces us into combat, by having us have to move a block, or open a door and have the animation interrupted by enemies. 
This little roly-poly of death can actually be broken for some sweet, sweet gear, which is something God of War has always been great at, having so many different hidden secrets littered around the world. And though most are hidden by the camera angle, I say that instead of that being cheap, it's actually a really clever use of the limitation they placed on themselves. It's kind of ironic and also brilliant that Kratos, the future murderer of an entire pantheon, parts not a sea, but a dry, dead desert. Instead of leading people to the promised land, Kratos destroyed that promised land. Freaking scale, my gamers. Seeing this as a wide-eyed kid blew my mind. For three days, Kratos climbed the sheer walls of the mountain. With no water? Well, damn. Let me sell my soul if I could survive with no water. It's just a fun visual, yeah. But also, you can think about it as the gods as vultures and Kratos as a soldier that's having his only eye plucked out making him blind to their treachery to not actually remove his memories. And when he summons, he even looks at the soldier. And whose armor does that soldier look like when a certain demigod gets all wrathful? More big boy pullbacks. I love when Kratos looks like an ant, knowing what he's capable of. So you think you can conquer the temple of the gods, do you? A little FF fun fact for you. This scene was among the first dialogue ever written for the game and was never changed once. May the gods grant you strength to conquer the perils that lay before you. Good luck, Spartan. I love this delivery. Dude has clearly stated this speech a million times and constantly gets overlooked. And how sweet of him to wish us luck. Kinda nuts that the elevator of the box is literally right there. Like, literally right. Like, right to the right of us. Something we need more again in modern gaming is just good old-fashioned traps. No puzzles or anything. Just something we see and gotta finesse our way through. Now, that's some brilliant machinery right there. If these regular-ass soldiers could come through and rotate the rings, like, I know why Kratos could do it, but you? Me? But they alone will not carry you to the end of your task. Want to f bet? Straight up though, I love the Blade of Artemis. Immediately feeling that single target's damage spike is enough to make any gamer get the creamies. So the challenge of Atlas was actually the first level developed for the game, which is perfect as director David Jaffe was still trying to figure out what God of War was going to be. You'll notice there's a bit of everything in this level. Rope climbing, wall climbing, puzzles, combat, traps, items. Something fun that we rarely see anymore is the developers having to decide whether or not to do something at the cost of frame rate. And this section right here drops those frames from 60 to 20. But focus test groups loved the diarrhea of enemies so much, the 20 frames didn't really matter, and they left it in. Soul Doors makes more sense in the temple as some kind of magical barrier created as part of the participants' challenge to get the box. So much we take for granted nowadays. This little bit of animation took so much work for Corey Barlog and animators to put together. All just to have a more satisfying moment of collecting the key that gets used for the next level. It had always been enough to carry them through any battle, until this day. The barbarians to the east numbered in the thousands. If I've learned anything from history, it's don't f with no barbarians. They will tear you a new asshole. First the Romans, and now Kratos? Have I mentioned that the CG cutscenes also hold up? They're showing their age, but I remember being a kid and these being the most beautiful thing I've ever seen since I found melted cheese. Bring back actual platforming. Now this big ass yellow lines crap or press circles to jump between handholds. That's nice of the gods to remove Roly Poly's brother after succeeding, which are actually called a marmadilla dilla -dee, which is freaking hilarious. S-C-A-L-E. Why am I harping on it so much? Because it's a PS2! Oh, what a cute... Puppy. These fights are intense, because if you leave the babies around too long, they'll mature faster than a child without a father. Shout out to all my single moms out there. Appreciate you, mom. You raised me right. Oh yeah, we're still in a temple on top of giant Vin Diesel. I really dig this challenge here too. God of War 1, if I were to give it anything, that is... It never got stale for me. There was always a new ability, a new challenge, a unique puzzle to constantly keep me engaged. By the time I felt any sense of a grind, the game threw me into Hades, and I was like, Ah, oh, what the f*** is going on? And then it was over. A big emphasis with God of War was for it to feel like an adventure in all aspects. Jaffe wanted to hit everything. Climbing, balancing, fighting, thinking, and even swimming. I like the little side narrative we unravel of what happened to the architect of Pandora's temple and his family. As the architect has a lot in common with Kratos. Either the gods got a lot of flaming balls, we know Ares does calm down, or they just reuse the same 30. Oh my god, this part of the game. This part of the game plus later in Hades made me want to pull my f***ing hair out. With streaming the game, plus the delay for my capture card, precision like this drove me up the walls. Enjoy my pain. <laughs> Crap.
Kratos got nuts of steel. It's pretty novel that we've got to knock off the armor before getting to his health bar. And the actual health bar UI is protected with that armor plate. Way more fun than just two health bars. Oh, I love me some bloody reflections. Sean, how was that? How was that accent? <sighs> Another entry in our... Don't stick your Kratos in that. The Rings of Pandora have been our hub area this whole time, and to finally line up all the rings is so cathartic. This moment really feels earned. Kratos was so excited, he took his pants off. Correct me if I'm wrong, but God of War uses matte paintings for these long hallway shots until the game actually needs to render them in. Which is why you get that really strange perspective feeling like you're closer than you actually are. We realized it was a monument not only to the gods of Olympus, but to the madness of the war who had designed it. Hence the name Cliffs of Madness, and why the traps, constructions, and puzzles are a lot less structured and more... Murdery? Yeah, we'll go with that. The horror camera cuts are great for these motherfuckers. No enemy in the game is harder than these fools. Yo, I do not like high-res harpies. A reminder from his former master of the decision that had cost Kratos everything. I don't mind being drip-fed Kratos' past. I like the mystery build-up throughout. That's why I love Horizon Zero Dawn's story so much. Notice the eyeballs! This puzzle really got me. The rotating the extra piece was perfect for someone like me who sucks at Jigsaw to spend a lot of time on this. And the freaking mad architect really wasn't holding anything back. If you aren't perfect during this section, you are dead. It could just be my almost second delay ruining me, but I refuse to take responsibility for being bad this day. I really miss how cheesy picking up items used to be in games. Imagine if in Red Dead Redemption 2 when Arthur picked anything up and did this. They really did have to put a Wilhelm screen in the saddest moment of the game, didn't they? The image of his two final victims would stay with him for all his days. I like the restraint of the narrator and the camera work, not being like, And Kratos brutally murdered his wife and daughter! Look at her mangled bodies! No, we get a silhouette and can easily piece it together, but Santa Monica respects our intelligence. And with the flies and early signs of decomposition, we can surmise that Virtus only recently did this. Possibly at the start of the GNC mission. Also, his two sons died while he was building the temple, and then murdered his wife, and in a strange sense of honor or remembrance, made their skulls integral parts of the temple. More anal camera for the end of the game. I'm so grateful Santa Monica didn't put anything seriously strong in here, as it would have been hell. This game was definitely developed as a one-off, but from this one image alone, I swear they had hope for a sequel. I remember as a kid thinking, they really gonna make me walk this thing all the way back to Athens? I will see to that. <laughs> Goodbye, Spartan. You will rot in the depths of Hades for all eternity. Please give me Ares on my football team. For how could he forget spilling the blood of his own family? And for those who didn't get it yet, here's your bone throne. Now, with your wife and child dead, nothing will hold you back. You will become even stronger. You will become death itself. Little did Ares know how prophetic his words would become. Look out, Thor. The ashes of your wife and child will remain fastened to your skin. Still one of the worst punishments I've ever seen in a story. Emotionally speaking. The ghost of Sparta had been born. It's a double entendre too. One for his skin tone and two for the fact that he should have died to the barbarian. In the end, in death, he had failed. Not knowing how Hades worked playing through this the first time, I really thought they were just gonna do me like that. You again? Oh. Hades has gone through a lot of different changes throughout the games, but this one is the most brutal and disgusting. It's like all the flesh that gets slowly dumped here forms into these slagmites. I really enjoyed Hades for its big platform challenge, but holy sh! I don't think I've tackled a more frustratingly hard thing as these towers. I'm happy it's really hard, because for once the platforming matches how hard the game can be on the higher difficulties. Ah, Kratos. This motherfucker. Complete your task, Kratos, and the gods will forgive your sins. Always very precise to say forgive. Gotta say, the Artemis Blade dismemberment on every kill is quite the cash money effect. Zeus! Do you see now what your son can do? Which one? I freaking guess so. Man, is it just so cool to see tiny little baby Athens. The final boss isn't just a fist fight with Ares to see who's the better warrior, but a battle on the side of Kratos to see if he can learn to forgive himself for what he's done. How did I have no idea until now that this was the Blade of Olympus? Technically. 
The final confrontation isn't about who will die first by losing their health, but who is merely the strongest. Like the gods are watching and judging to see who will earn the title of God of War. I was trying to make you a great warrior. You succeeded. Why does Ares explode? Don't know. Is it cool? Yeah. We promised your sins would be forgiven. And so they are. But we never promised to take away your nightmares. It wasn't just Zeus turning against him in two on why he wanted to kill all the gods. This is a big factor as well. Now there is no hope. How cool that they showed us almost the very last scene at the start. I always enjoy when stories do it and do it well, like here. What was up with the older media and always making Olympus all solid gold? Whenever men rode forth to battle for good cause or for evil, they did so under the watchful eye of the man who had defeated a god. They were driven forward by Kratos. This is how we know that Santa Monica really didn't know if they were going to be getting a sequel or not. And I love how they show future conflicts under Kratos' watch. The mortal who had become the new god of war. What a truly satisfying ending. So God of War is straight up a certified hood classic. The pinnacle to me for what the action adventure genre was for gamers, wanting something a bit more serious. Through its success, it spawned one of my favorite franchises and one of the more enduring ones. God of War really has everything you could ever want out of the genre. Great gameplay, story, platforming, puzzles. And the best part is that each game after this is only better than the last. The PSP games were great in their own right for being portable, and God of War Ascension only got shit because of franchise fatigue and telling a story that didn't need to be, but the gameplay was still top notch. God of War is still an amazing play today, and is smoother and more bug-free than games released in the modern era. It's got everything you could want from a single-player game, that's why Santa Monica is still one of the top dogs in the gaming industry. And they didn't just hit it and quit it like Kratos would. They said, you want to see me do it again, and made another banger. So let's check that out. Keeping God of War fashion, menu straight to the game. Gotta say, I love the god drip that Santa Monica gave Kratos, but nothing beats the straight bare chest of Kratos for me. I love the whole feeling of who the hell even needs armor. My lord, Kratos! Another city is ready to fall! Soon all shall know the glory of Sparta! I mean, what did the gods really expect? The whole reason the man is alive is because of his desire for conquest, and then give that man the ultimate power over war? Yeah, okay. Coupled that with refusing to let him die and force him to become the only thing he hates more than himself? Greek gods are dumb, and I'm glad Santa Monica keeps that up here. Enough Kratos. Maybe it's just me, but seeing Athena in the flesh feels really special. Like there was a part of me that believed she was always just a statue. The wrath of Olympus grows. Soon I will no longer be able to protect you. I need no protection. Spoken like the true god of war. Do not forget that it was I who made you a god, ghost of Sparta. Oh, because he was just clamoring to be one, yeah? Kratos had turned the pain of his memories into hatred. Oh, baby, do I love the callbacks to the opening of God of War 1. And the leap being recontextualized. He's now doing the same thing Ares did that got the Olympians to turn on him. Live long enough to see yourself become the villain, I guess. Athena! You conspire against me! Yep. But you should be flattered. Instead of hiring a demigod to kill you, she went to Daddy Zeus. I love, love, love that we get to use the Golden Blades of Athena, at least for a moment, because the Golden Blue is just so pretty, and God of War 1 never really gave us that chance. Also just adds to his station, that being godly and righteous. The colors being a direct contrast to Ares. So cool that the Colossus is just in the background trying to figure out how to get to us, and it's not even our main concern. But the gods, he's killed them all. He still has some of the powers of a god! I think even without them, y'all would fall as fast as Athena's loyalty to Kratos. So this game was released on the PS2 when it launched, while many other titles were getting their start on the PS3 at the time. Santa Monica proved that working with the hardware they knew and pushing it to its absolute limits was the best way to go, as when God of War 2 launched, it was still looking better than a lot of PS3 titles at the time. And even now streamed. Obviously, the resolutions, geometry, and textures aren't up to date, but as an overall package, just like God of War 1, its art style impresses me and keeps the experience enjoyable. It'd probably get annoying playing throughout this game, so glad Kratos saying stuff during his spells isn't a thing. But I do like this opening with how strong and cocky Kratos is, just mopping fools up. Keeping in traditional God of War fashion, we've got a giant boss battle to kick us off. God of War 2 really did take God of War 1 and just go bigger and better with every aspect that they could. This is funny and you're too serious. There will never be a game like the first two God of War ones. I mean that in the sense of no game will ever wow us the way these titles did when they were released. In a way, we've kind of seen it all. So looking back, I'm glad it was God of War that blew me away when it comes to what the PlayStation hardware could do for the first time. And with that, Santa Monica has always been the developer to push the hardware to its limit for the past three console generations. Really hoping to do something towards the end of the PS5 with Ragnarok being a duology and all that. A cute feature that we've got all of our stats and weapons maxed out since like 
We're a god and all that. It's an even better way to tutorialize the game because we're a god. We should just stop everything we come across. The War of the Colossus sounds like metal scraping together. I love when sound designers get creative like this. X marks the spot, baby. What makes this Colossus so formidable is how fast this boy can move. You'd expect something of this size to be lumbering. Big fan of all the new QT button presses. R1, L1, flicking the stick, rotating the stick, seeing God of War 2, and thinking about future games really makes me realize how little QT's God of War 1 had outside of general combat and doors. This is the second time Kratos has been launched and fallen through the ceiling. He even looks at it this time. I wonder if this is a pattern or something. Oh boy, you better get ready for some puzzles in this game because, correct me if I'm wrong, God of War 2 has the most puzzles of any of them. Depending on who you are, that's a slam dunk winner winner. If you're a smooth brained like me with puzzles, this was rough. But hey, Kratos moves moderately faster with dragging things. Yay. Drain your godly powers into the sword, Kratos. Why do you aid me now? When I was younger, I always interpreted this as Kratos being annoyed at Zeus, which to me is hilarious. But in reality, he's actually more suspicious of Zeus than annoyed. Probably still annoyed, though. What I do now, I do for the good of all Olympus. So, Kratos really isn't the brightest candle of the bunch in the first three. Should have seen this coming from a mile away. But to be fair, there's a chance that Kratos actually believes Zeus and that it's Athena going against him. I like that our enemies aren't complete idiots. Bronzy Boy gave Kratos a hand and not being a god and now is using his stump to his advantage. Thank you, Santa Monica, for letting us jump fast along ropes and walls. God of War has never been one to be lacking in level design. Being inside the Colossus is just straight up cool. The only way it could be better is if the Colossus was trying to get at us in some way. This is a load screen, right? Like a well-crafted load screen, right? Something we will see a few times is that bosses aren't just hit until they die. There are more puzzle elements implemented in the fight, which keeps them way more engaging and fresh from one another. Kratos jumps from the mouth of the Colossus, arrogantly boasting to the gods about his abilities, which is real funny. Because this is our third to the pattern. The third time he jumps down. Believing himself victorious, only to be destroyed from a threat he didn't see coming, just like Deuce. And each time Kratos falls, he's falling further and further down until the last one where he falls from the mouth of the Colossus, such as the Olympians are spitting Kratos out from his station. I love the design for the Blade of Olympus. That is all. The camera doesn't make Zeus the focal point of this shot, so you might not even consider it to be a player in the scene to come, which is perfect because neither does Kratos. The camera even struggles to follow Zeus as if he's so powerful he's got control over Santa Monica. Man, does Zeus look like a garden gnome next to the way too big sword that should be smaller than him. And Zeus is played by none other than Corey Burton, who also played Count Dooku in the Clone Wars. I will not let Eddie's fate be my own. The gods are petty and pathetic, and your rule is weak. Damn, even when he can barely stand, Kratos does not put up with no sh You must vow to forever serve me. Remember how that went last time, Zeus? <laughs> Thanks, Santa Monica, for letting us at least try to fight back. It also makes us feel the loss more because Zeus tricked and beat Kratos, but he also beat us, making us resent him just like Kratos. QTs you can't win are the best. Just saying. Our first pre-rendered cutscene, and it is beautiful! A choice from the gods is as useless as the gods themselves. You will never be the ruler of Olympus. The cycle ends here. I'm going to throw on a win for God of War 2018 for when Kratos says this, because I completely missed it having not played 2 in so many years. Notice how the blade's core is red, like it's still sucking off Kratos. I mean, sucking up Kratos' life god force energy. Fight, Spartan. Don't like that. I like that. Never mind. Ah! This is not the end. You can do anything with children, and it's just creepy. Who are you? Rorik's dead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. I am the Titan Gaia, ever-present mother of Earth. Linda Hunt deserved to have an actual character in the game. She's so good in the role and is actually as cute as a button. I am the Titan Gaia, ever-present mother of Earth. I have watched you become a powerful warrior, and I have been with you through all the events of your life, but I can no longer simply watch. Explaining why she's been our narrator throughout. <laughs> Kratos is a hardcore mother Escaping Hades is just another Tuesday for Kratos. Glad it's not a huge section of this game, as we got more important things to do, like 300 times slow puzzles. 
I like Kratos told the last Spartan, as telling him he's straight up working with the Titans would be no bueno. I say there's a certain art and beauty to the murder that Kratos commits. Normally sections like this are super intrusive and annoying, but flying on Pegasus really doesn't feel like that much of a hindrance. So hats off to Santa Monica for good controls. To enter this place. So close to quoting the Ghost King from Lord of the Rings. I'll give you a win because anything that makes me think of that trilogy is a win. I would question why Kratos is not cold, but he's got the flame imperishable. I mean, Blades of Athena. Hey, look, Namir. Zeus, my only crime was helping mankind. When I took the fires of Olympus to the mortals. And look where that got us. Maybe Zeus was right. Every day by this cursed bird. <laughs> That bird was just like, what's up? Man, are they as detailed as they can be with his insides reviving? Typhoon is often described having sparkly, shiny eyes. Neat that sparkle lines up with our UI sparkle. And embodied it with the power of the Titans. These ashes will give you great strength, Kratos. Because the dude needs more ashes on his body, right? The animation work here for Kratos is once again beautiful, and the reason why I use this mode as often as I could. It's not often we get a straight up heroic track for Kratos. It almost feels out of place, but I like it. Seriously though, why are God of War 2's animations better than some modern games? Really good show it's about artistry, hard work, and passion to make a good product. Zeus took on a form of a bird that saved him when going to kill Kratos. The eagle that ended the cycle of Kronos, eating all his children. Does Harry Kronos make anyone else uncomfortable? But my foolish act of compassion would haunt the Titans forever. The same can be said about Zeus digging the grave for Kratos and God of War 1. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. The sins of his father, Kronos. And that's why the story of God of War is so good, all the way up to 2018. And it's not until God of War 18 that Kratos truly realizes what he's done and become. Like, Kratos. Guy is literally telling you the cautionary tale that you are following. These giant fistas are still impressive to me. I serve and protect the sisters of fate for the glory of Zeus. The time of Zeus is coming to an end. See, Chris could be reasonable, only killing when he absolutely has to. And he, uh, absolutely needs to kill Zeus. All the other gods and Dibby gods just got in the way. It's actually their fault, right? <laughs> This game doesn't deserve a brutal counter because God of War 3 still is nuts, but this deserved it for sure. Neat using the chains as a crop to get the horsies going. What a freaking shot, seriously. I was expecting a fade in and fade out, but no. Santa Monica makes us run it all, and I actually like it so we can really soak in the scale of everything. The animate of the fates is what most puzzles in this game ride on, and it is a pretty fun, neat mechanic, adding uh, additional layer puzzles that would have worked on their own without the time slowing. You might notice the sexy chests that harbor our stat upgrades in God of War 3. Here, those bastards are so well hidden, but worth it because it's an instant upgrade. Oh shit, Barbarian Boy is back? I follow my way through the Guardians of Hades, and I rolled my way out of the fires of torment to change my fate. You know, after hearing him do this, I fully believe that he could have taken down Kratos in single combat. And to think he did all this without the blessing from the gods? Why isn't this dude the main character? <laughs> Lord of the Rings has ruined the sound that horses make since they use that sound for trolls. And I've heard the noise come out of the trolls a thousand times more than I have horses. So to me, horses sound like trolls. Oh my god, yes! This dude is in all three main games and I would have loved if they kept the me going in the newest ones. And from here on out, you might notice I'm playing on New Game Plus. This is sadly because everything from this point on in my footage got corrupted and I had to re-record the entire game. So, I did recently do a normal playthrough, and I'll be talking from that experience, even if the gameplay doesn't always reflect that. I'll add on though, using the Blade Olympus for an entire game is just a blast to tear up everything. I also like that Kratos gets to fight this guy again, defeating him on his own terms, with his own abilities. For the most part. If we're going to be honest, all of the weapons and magic are really just reskins with slight tweaks, barring the Spear of Destiny. Which is fine by me, as I wouldn't have thought twice about it unless I wasn't playing games for my living. So, they get a pass from me. The Barb Hammer really is just a blunt blade of Artemis, but way more novel since it's our OG mortal enemy's weapon. What blows my mind is how all these soldiers got this far without the ailment of the fates, and how all the puzzles are reset for us when we get there. These men are just built different. These motherfuckers can get so annoying, but I like the different challenge of having to focus them down before they summon more and more Cyclops. Can you even blame me? Even Santa Monica's troll-like enemies have some horse in there. These boys being on top isn't just for show either. They will mess you up, making the Cyclops attacks faster and more punishing. Most of God of War 2's puzzles are just logic puzzles, which 
is why I mentioned not enjoying them too much earlier because the variety of thinking isn't too taxing. But this one got me since it was such a simple concept with a mechanic we've yet to see in God of War. Leave it to a Spartan to be a regular ass dude 1v3. Yo, smart reuse of one of the like two bosses in God of War 1. The assets at least. Like I said in God of War 1, bring back more to straight up traps! Ah, uh, some things never change. Just like in God of War 2018, we've got to go all the way out of our way for the simplest item or thing to progress. God of War. Jason. Like, Jason and the Argonauts? Well, the Golden Fleece being munched on and the skelly men we find in the moment. So yeah, I still love how every step just has Greek heroes and myths and treats them like they're not a big deal. We get Jason, Perseus, Theseus, and Kratos just kind of murders them all or does some looting. Say what you will about Kratos, but he's never been lacking in creativity. I dig the fleece as more of a piece of armor than just some golden fabric. And oh baby, is that the look that makes our OG Kratos so badass. Took long enough for them to give us a straight up counter. Love it though. This is revenge for all those bullshit rock stuns that insta killed me at full health. Well, running like that, I don't think you're gonna get very far. The build up to URL is neat. It's like she's watching us and we can't see her. Building up anticipation for when we finally throw down with her. Do I love the artificial time slow and speed up of some of these time traps? No. But as long as you're not just speeding through it like in this clip since I knew what to do, it does make for really honest tension on the first playthrough. Okay, Fat Medusa is now what I expected, but I'm here for some grotesqueness. And damn, homegirl doesn't even need to hold us in her gaze to freeze us. Sets her apart from the regular Gorgons. When designing URL, Santa Monica had the idea of her weight being too much on her, that she needed to drag herself, and modded her crawl after an alligator. Even in death, she's angry as hell. Have I mentioned that the grappling is super fun and never got old? Because the grappling is super fun and never got old. Ah, Santa Monica heard about the comments from my last video and only gave me one dirt hole of a camera angle. Just like the Cyclops summoners, the high priests give us another angle of fun in the combat. I bet they had to spend a lot of time, uh, timing this out just to succeed on it by the skin of your teeth. Are you watching me now, sisters? Give me a sign! The juxtaposition between Kratos and, well, everyone is still the line. All looking to the gods and higher powers as if they actually care about the people down on Earth. And since we know what Kratos knows, they all just look so stupid and it endears us to Kratos more. Am I the great Perseus to kill this fallen god? Harry Hamlin was brought in to play Perseus. You might recognize his voice because he actually played Perseus way back in the day with the OG Clash of the Titans. Super cool that Santa Monica paid him mind and brought him into the booth. Which brings me to the cutscenes. This game was made before mocap was a widely used tool in game creation. So, one, getting out raw performance out of the actors is much harder and the directors gotta work harder to describe exactly what they want from the actors. And they still nail it. And two, it really is up to the animator to truly be the actors here. They've gotta animate the body and face to match exactly all the nuances that make each character unique. If not, at least I can bathe in the glory of being the one who brought down the mighty Kratos. And Harry Hamlin actually approached this from the POV that this is the character he played 30 years prior, just all grown up. I'll give it to God of War. They really upped their game when it comes to boss fights, from mechanics to spectacle. Using the splashes of Perseus' feet was a pretty fun challenge to take him down. God, I'm embarrassed how long it took me to figure this one out. Sneaky, sneaky, Santa Monica. Yo, was not expecting that dude that we killed like four hours ago to come back and give us our final weapon. A weapon that is actually totally unique in a way it handles compared to all other new weapons in this game. This is just cool. You can't tell me you wouldn't totally do a longer grapple challenge. Hmm, I wonder what happened to his body. Oh. My god, they just had to bring back these f didn't they? Do you hear me? It's my wings that will make it across. It is my test! The new take on Icarus is so befitting of God of War. For one, of the classic cautionary tale of hubris, which, I mean, all characters in Greek myth have buckets of, and also his hyperfixation to get to the Sisters of Fate and controlling his fate. Which I think is why we all love Kratos so much. Not because he's a badass rage monster that made murder his art form, but because he's the only one in this entire world that's complete control and agency over his destiny. The gods can't stop him. The fates can't stop him. The king of both the titans and gods can't stop him. And not even death has ever held him. God, the goofball of a camera work is just... Mwah. Another QTE you can't succeed on. Oh boy, Atlas. Those who play Chains of Olympus know these boys go back. Love me some Wings of Icarus. Just adding more layers to the platforming is always a win in my book. You really shouldn't put your Kratos in that. And how disgustingly awesome, though. Why was Kratos' first thought to get back to the surface was to go inside Atlas? Uh, he's gonna need that back. 
Talk about a torment. Being forced to hold up the world on top of having things living inside you and lava flowing in your cracks and crevices? Ugh. God of War 2018 is a masterpiece, but one thing I've heard about that I kind of agree with is that the environments do leave a little bit to be desired, which the OG trilogy never had a problem with. This entire level going in and outside of Atlas's body is just so inspired. Don't f with the Titans. They can catch mosquitoes with their fingertips. The sound I make when EA announces they are publishing another game. And how do you plan to defeat the King of the Gods? By taking the blade of Olympus back! Kratos always yells his lines, but at least here it's justified. He's got a little baby voice compared to Atlas. Nope, still don't like Harry Vin Diesel. Atlas showing off the magic he's about to give us. Man, that music of God of War is so damn good! And the framing of the Olympians being the power-hungry bad guys is awesome. Because, like I mentioned, most humans believe them righteous. Which we all know very well they are not. How can Atlas look both like a big baby and also a grown man? Even in this cutscene, you can see the little magic that happens when Kratos brings the Titans to his timeline. So, really, the sisters have no power as this was going to happen no matter what. Hence why Kronos and Atlas were not brought back to fight in God of War 3, since they've been personally dealt with by the gods. I have given you the last of my magic spark. God, Michael Clark Duncan has such a booming sexy voice for Atlas. You'll notice it's a matte painting inside that temple, and when the stone wipes it, it becomes rendered in. Just little techniques to keep the frame rate up since we didn't need to see some 3D model as we were fighting. Thank you, Shade of Marker, for giving us another enemy dump, same as the last game. Poor Hermes not getting up there. But honestly, after playing 3, I kind of understand why. So in other words, Zeus is a beta ass b This temple is just a whack ass puzzle after puzzle with weird underground blood pools. I guess maybe this is where the sacrifice's blood would go? This is God of War 2's most neat puzzle as we can go get extra gear by figuring out which beam to light. Or just unfreeze the eagle and play on easy mode, but the idea is there. Man, is this one just hilarious if it takes you a while to figure out? <laughs> just listening to him jump off time and time again is great. And what a little man. Not doing his duty just because it's Kratos. Like, dude, come on, just like Kratos says later. This is your purpose. Die with honor. Straight up though, why weren't there more puzzles like this? Or having to do one thing in a timeline to affect the other like Sin was sacrifice. Me in the middle of the night drinking my water bottle. Ooh, this one can get dicey. And I love when you hear the sound of them coming out while slow and making me brown the bed. This might be one of the hardest sections of the game for me, Loki. What was the hardest for you? Man, that Taco Bell be hitting hard. Oh, this is the highlight of the game. The area is silhouetting us, and then the 2D combat really makes this feel like a duel. And with them both being Spartans, of course it'd be like a dance. Talk about sweeping the rug out from under you. I told you to return to Sparta. Why do you leave Sparta unprotected? On one hand, this is Kratos being a hard head with a hard on for Sparta, but on the other, it's about him being upset that he accidentally killed a fellow Spartan and is looking for something else to blame than himself. Zeus. He came under the cloak of darkness. Man stays alive for like two minutes after being stabbed by the mother blades of Athena just to deliver some news about the destruction of Sparta. And if you pay attention, this man is the farthest we've seen any other person get. Not counting the bodies next to Clotho, something tells me she eats them, so go f***ing Sparta. To change the fate of our beloved Sparta, for I am all that is left. <coughs> the music is so good and sad right here, but even better because the track is called The Glorious Sparta, and it's been changed from the triumphant version we hear in Rhodes to this heartbreaking one as they lament Sparta. I grow tired of the lies of the gods! Do I love it when the players take away control for the player for the character to just be the character. All of our button presses just have Kratos slamming and stomping his feet like a lining little baby. It's not like he lost his entire kingdom or anything, jeez. There is a war on the horizon and we need you to lead us into battle. Guy using him as a pawn was set up even in this game, using the image of his wife to coerce him, and then placing him in the Elysium Fields, which is meant to be a paradise contrasted with the burning of Sparta. Even if he was in paradise, his past would forever haunt him, bringing some light puzzle elements into our boss fight. Right on. God, just looking at her makes me think of mono white angels and I want to die. What's the point of covering one titty? You know? I mean, I'm not complaining, and also Kratos keeps his entire shirt off all game, so... For the first time, we got an almost completely aerial boss fight, cleverly utilizing the new grapple mechanic well. Woo! Going back to the first game. The sword which you stand on delivered your victory against Ares. Without it, you will be the one who dies this day. That's a very roundabout way of, uh... Just killing Kratos. But I'll say the Fates are smart enough to know that they aren't powerful enough through strength of arms to defeat him, and this is their only way. 
So all this combat really does live up to the achievement you get at the end. 15 minute fight scene. One last hurrah before the final two bosses of the game, really. So Kalatha was the last sister of fate, ironically the youngest based on her looks, and it's definitely not something I expected. She's the one that spins the threads of life and was inspired by the design of silkworms, funnily enough. She's got a cute little crown though. That helps. Yeah, superhero landing. Now this is what I call a final boss. Right here is where Kratos evens the playing field for the rest of the time that Zeus is alive. Either it's because I was younger or that God of War was brutal with its final bosses, because I remember just how tough Zeus was when played on normal and above. These games really made you feel accomplished when you beat them. I have come to kill you, Zeus! Ooh, paid back callback. I'm wondering why Zeus would even fall for this, but then again, it's stupid ass petty god Zeus. Ooh, does it feel good just to kick Zeus like a tin can? But here's the real callback. And not knowing there was a third one, I really thought we actually did it. It's emotional as hell right now, but god damn it, Santa Monica, you had to come in with the joke trophy name. Stop! No. And another person Kratos seems to have affection for, dead by his hand. TC Carson gives such a good performance here that I could definitely see him doing the 2018 Kratos. Pretty cool that the goddess of wisdom slash war isn't hypersexualized. Santa Monica knew when to have fun and when to pull back. His own son. His son. Huh. So I guess Zeus was just being honest with all those my sons. Just thought he referred to everyone as that. Zeus must live so that Olympus will prevail. I really never noticed that Zeus took these words out of Athena's mouth with his speech for the World War II. I mean the Kratos siege. The time of the gods has come to an end. I really didn't expect them to live up to the statement and the hype with the third entry, but did they deliver? Victory awaits. See, the effects of the Titans are the same ones we see when Atlas was remembering the fight. Hence why we don't see any of the Titans in the timeline until Kratos brings them back. It's kind of mind bending. Kratos brings them from his timeline, plucked from the Great Wars timeline, right as the big blast happens so the gods just think that they got evaporated. So after the gods win the war, they just live their lives until the moment that Kratos went back in time to bring them to the siege. It might be the most straightforward, simple time travel that doesn't break anything that I've ever seen. And it makes sense in my head, I don't know if I explain it properly, but it works and I don't think there's any plot holes. We will unite, we will stand together, and I will wipe out this plague. If you want to know my thoughts on the new god designs and Zeus's speech, make sure you check out my God of War 3 video. Zeus, your son has returned! I bring the destruction of Olympus! The best part of the trilogy is that they pick up pretty much exactly where the previous one did. This might be the most hyped I've ever been for a game to come out in my entire life. The next one I can think of is Ragnarok, because it's got a similar energy to God of War 3 did. Man, so God of War 2, another instant classic from Santa Monica, who never really misses. All their games are great, and if you watch any of the making of documentaries, you can really see the passion and love and sacrifices they have made for this franchise. God of War 2 does everything a good sequel should do. Take everything that was good about the first game and make it bigger and better. And boy, did they. The battles are bigger, the bosses are better, the locations are huge. Then to bring in the simple story that drives the gameplay so well of Kratos needing his vengeance. It might be my least favorite God of War of the trilogy, but that's like picking between your favorite kids. You still love them, I guess, but you know you got a favorite. Three. Three is the best. Anyway, though, what were your thoughts on God of War 2? How old were you when you first played it? I was about 12-ish, and boy, do I remember getting stuck more often than I did this go-around. I may not love it as much as the first and third one, but this is still such a great bridge to the epic finale that nobody was ready for or expected. God of War 3 hit harder than my dad, I mean Kratos, like nothing else at the time. And on this day, the man, the legend, Kratos, will have his revenge. Normally, it's the man, the myth, the legend. But unfortunately for the Greeks, Kratos is no myth. In case you need a beautifully rendered reminder of the key events that happened in the past two games, here you go. And straight into the main menu like it was nothing. A crazy amazing presentation to end our trilogy, Santa Monica. And keeping in line with the last two games, we get to see Kratos in all his glorious anger in this main menu. My vengeance ends now. 
Who wasn't ready to freak out and scream when they played this back in 2010? Only three years ago did we play God of War to cap off the PS2 era, and not even halfway through the PS3 era, we got one of the defining games of the generation. Mountain emerged out of the chaos. You know, the end of this game presents itself much more bleak than it really is. And right at the start, we are told that the chaos of war doesn't mean the end of all things, but the beginning of something new. For all its gore, power fantasies, and sex mini games, this story is really about hope and forgiveness in you, as Pandora smashes over our head with later. But I can forgive the lack of subtlety for the absolute masterpiece of a game this is. Did the might of the Olympians Perfect. While Zeus is circle jerking with his fellow Olympians, Willem is reminding us these guys are a joke. Olympus will prevail! I know it's a pre-rendered cutscene, but that doesn't take away the magnitude of the one-shot take. We went from the realm of Hades all the way to the top of Mount Olympus in one shot. That's still so freaking cool. And see, Santa Monica always wanted to do one-shot takes. How awesome that God of War 2 CGI cutscene was recreated using pre-rendered in-engine footage. And thank you, Santa Monica, for showing us our Deadpool for this game. But with a man like Kratos on the scene, there are no predictions on who will die. The answer is just yes. You know, the angle almost looks like he missed the top of the columns. There was probably a helicopter there. All right, everyone, I got a ruin for you. Oh, devil's oddity. Oh, devil's oddity. But also, Kratos gets his theme before he even shows up. That's how badass he is. I'm playing the remaster, but I will still be talking about the game from the PS3 perspective and how incredible it was then. We aren't even pre-rendered here, and God of War 2, guy it was pretty much impossible to do, was only around for cutscenes. Now, we are riding her into battle and fighting on her. Since I suck and have a tendency to go backwards through franchises on this channel, there's a quick spoiler for God of War 18. Just skip ahead 10 seconds and you'll be fine. Coming back to 3 after using the Blades of Chaos in God of War 4, I'm even more impressed with how Santa Monica were able to preserve the combos with the camera ship. Is this a win for God of War 3? Not exactly, but one for Santa Monica. And for the boohooers that complain God of War is not that great compared to other games in the genre, I just gotta say, who cares? God of War is still a blast to play, and the games have always been pushing what's possible with technology to its absolute limits. God of War 3 came halfway through the PS3 era, and it remains among the best-looking games on the console. We aren't really shown the full extent of the powers that each Olympian holds in previous titles, but the end of the trilogy is no time to stand on ceremony, and we are treated to this ginormous boss battle with one of the big three right from the start. Something that not many other games still can match God of War 3 on is its sense of scale. Never before God of War 3 had we really seen a game this gorgeous and this big. Santa Monica knew this would be the end of their trilogy and held nothing back with what they wanted. Ah uh, yes, our first QTE that God of War most definitely had a hand in for the mechanics infamy. But 3 leveled them up a bit with the stylized button prompts and having them on the edge of the screen that correspond with their location on the controller, which fixes the big problem found with QTEs, not being able to watch the amazingly animated action because you're having to pay attention to the prompts. All fixed up here. So this is Kratos at the height of his brutality. Sean, can we get a brutal counter for Kratos? And speaking of leveling up, Kratos' strength is on full display now. He can open normal chests with one hand now. It's the little things like this that make sequels so great. We are just this tiny little ant among these gods and titans. It's just so gratifying to watch the war rage around us while we're just casually climbing. This one hole that Poseidon makes is possibly the sole reason we're able to kill Zeus and Gaia at the end. Since, you know, it's the hole we jump through to escape being crushed. Poseidon secretly is Severus Snape? Hey look, it's the guy that brought upon the fall of Olympus. Ares, I mean. Kratos has been here for a while. This is Poseidon getting payback for all the fish we've caught with hooks.
quick reminder of how terrifying Kratos must actually be. The mountain would like to know your location. And pretty cool that we gotta use our thumbs just like Kratos. God of War 3 is just a hit list of all the gods that get in the way of Kratos killing Zeus. Having Kratos kill one of the big three as the opener to your game is a great way to set our expectations for what is to come. You know, I was really hoping for a little bloop, but this will do. And I'm not surprised it didn't make that cute little sound because this game came before Bathos really started to take over in storytelling. Bathos is basically anti-climax, an undercut of the tone and emotional weight for a punchline that leaves us not feeling so heavy about what just happened. Think almost every Marvel Studios joke ever. So now we know that with each god that dies, their domain descends into chaos. Even with that new information, just like Walter White, I'm still on Kratos' side. Good job, Santa Monica. The sisters of fate could not hold me, and you will not see the end of this day. I will have my revenge! Yep. You're telling me the gods thought Percy Jackson stole that? <laughs> Do not deny me my revenge! God, who doesn't love T.C. Carson's Kratos? He's just amazing, and a big reason behind why Kratos is so beloved. I'm sad to hear that Santa Monica dropped him like he didn't do seven whole games with him prior. Christopher Judge is amazing, but I would have loved to see Carson's take on the calmer, more mature Kratos in 4. Listen carefully, Kratos. You were a simple pawn, nothing more. Zeus is no longer your concern. You know, that's some rich talk considering Kratos pretty much had already killed Zeus, if not for Athena, and you've already lost one war with an entire army at your back. But I'll say that guy has got some stones to talk to the god of war like that. Release. I... I will defeat Olympus. I will have my revenge. Kratos, at this point, is only living out of spite, and I can't help but love to see it. That's a level of petty that I aspire to be. And for another game, Kratos heads to Hades and has to fight his way out. At this point, I'd be concerned if we have a God of War game where he doesn't end up going to hell in some fashion. And I gotta say, I love what you dumped to place, Hades. I don't. My sacrifice to save Zeus has brought me to a higher existence. You're in the realm of the dead. Why are you so surprised? We knew Kratos cared for her, but to see him so shocked seeing her in a place she should be makes that even more clear. Also, this is still fresh. Like, Kratos killed her not even like 10 minutes ago. Appearances can be deceiving, Kratos. So can the children of Olympus. <laughs> this is some fun foreshadowing to the end of the game where she used Kratos to get her power back and Kratos did a little fake out slash and killed himself. And call me stupid, but I just realized these two are half siblings, right? Both their fathers is Zeus. A great pair considering Athena is sometimes recounted as the goddess of war. Y'all remember Shark Boy and Lava? Athena floating away like this totally reminds me of Tobor going, I'm free. Call forth the spirits of your exiled Spartan brothers. Love that now Kratos has no allies left among gods and Titan. His magic is the one thing that will never leave him. I always get a kick out of finding the areas hidden by the fixed camera. Which is a perfect said way to talk about it. The fixed camera isn't always perfect and a lot of people hate it, but for one, it's probably a big reason this game looks as good as it did when it came out. They got to choose exactly what the console was streaming at all times. And also, not having to fight a camera and just think about fighting is a luxury we never get to have anymore. No! Help! Ah! Well, we killed his best friend Theseus, so it's only fitting we cover all our bases. And Kratos is doing him a favor by releasing him from his torment. It's a common thing for him. Since he's so trapped in his own, he's constantly helping others. Prometheus, Mamir, an argument can be made for the Hydra key guy. Kratos is a solid dude. And on the theme of Kratos giving those which he cannot give himself, this song is a beautiful representation of that. As the note says, the voice sings of pain and loss. But when it sings of hope is when I feel true anguish at something I can never have. Notice that this motif comes up many times even after Kratos is left to the underworld. The new upgrade chest gets a sexy facelift along with Kratos having to use both hands for these. It's the little things. <laughs> 
Whatever happened to trusting the gamer to not be an idiot? These clowny bits don't have some totally stupid yellow or white paint all over it to guide us. We're smarter than devs give us credit for recently, and it was nice to see this. Now to Jabba God of War 4, because I know there's a reason for all the paint. A classic brutal kill. But I know who you are. You know of me. They said you would come. What the f- Kratos. Who the heck doesn't know you? Points to being humble, though. Even though the realm of Hades changes every game, this feels like a little callback to its version in God of War 2. I seek the flame of Olympus. Do you know of it? For what purpose, Spartan? For the purpose I have chosen. Now tell me, do you know of the flame? Perfect response. I've got to start using that when people question my actions. You have been truly helpful, Hephaestus. Not so subtle foreshadowing that Kratos and Olympus will be the death of Pandora. The quest for freedom is also a heavy burden. You would know, it only took you six games to be free. I've always liked that Cerberus is a beast race rather than one three-headed creature in God of War. It gives Santa Monica more to play with. And I have not forgotten that it was you who butchered my beautiful queen. For those that didn't play Chains of Olympus, this is a fun line to remind us Kratos exists outside of the narratives we see. For those who have, a fun nod to the past. Of course, he'd want vengeance too. And our second main boss is the other one of the big three. How rad. These are the type of boss fights we were sorely missing in God of War. I know it's because of budget and time constraints, but damn, are the ones in three some of the best in the franchise. <laughs> Understand this, Athena. Zeus will die. There's something to be said about constantly speaking your goals into existence. Take this channel, for example. I constantly told everyone around me that it'd work, and now look at us. You've got this amazing community of people that just want to love video games together. Do I mean nothing to you? You were a means to an end, Gaia. Nothing more. Haha, <laughs> you feel stupid now, don't you, Gaia? <laughs> Imagine being such a B-list god that you're rendered down to a QTE. Eh, not all gods are super powerful awesome, I guess. I don't mind a minigame to break up the flow of just constantly fighting. The gameplay is great, but the breaks like this are needed to keep things from getting stale. Kratos wasn't even worried about Perseus, but Perseus wanted to have that problem and Kratos kills him like flicking a bug off his shoulder and it just carries on like nothing. Bad ass. Changing the labyrinth from a maze to this blocked death puzzle is one of the many reasons that adaptation that doesn't strictly stick to the source material is wonderful. If we wanted the OG, then we'd go read those stories. But Santa Monica is constantly giving us new interpretations of these myths in some regards, while also being amazingly faithful in the other. They find this great balancing act in their God of War games. Catch a fly from the ass of Zeus is not worth my time. Kill any family members lately? Well... If we're talking only lately, that'd be Athena, kinda. Poseidon, definitely. Hades, wearing his soul as a blanket. Gaia, maybe? Not so lately, we got Ares, Perseus, Persephone, Lysandra, Calliope, and Callisto. Future tense? Zeus, definitely Gaia. Hephaestus, Hercules, Hera, Kronos, oh, and you. There's only two members of Kratos' family that he hasn't killed prior to God of War 4, and it's Rhea and Deimos. So, I didn't realize that Kratos pretty much hacked down his entire family tree throughout these games. Zeus! <laughs> Won't happen, can't happen. Adrian Barbeau voices a wonderfully annoying and quite killable Hermes. <laughs> this climb is just utterly ridiculous, and Iron Man and Kratos doesn't even get winded. I get one time sometimes just because I suck at breathing. Asthma. Pandora's box. This cutaway makes me believe that this is how Kratos imagines things. You may have brute force, but you lack speed. Do they not tell the tortoise and the hare story in Greece? Yeah, I guess they tell the story of Kratos and Hermes. God damn it, Kratos, hasn't Athena been through enough? It's nice that each of the god boss battles aren't just a big punch up between Kratos and them. Helios was just a little mini-game, Hermes here is a platformer, Hera's just a cutscene. The variety's nice. So, with the death of Hermes, what, is no one gonna get the mail on time? 
I mean, I never do anyway, so Grease should be uninfected. Fly off the ass of Zeus. And the fixed camera gives us fun angles like these that we'd otherwise never have. <laughs> the God of War theme is the access song to the Flame of Olympus. The flame is the absolute power that formed the gods. Is this representation of these gods being born of war and Kratos being inevitable? You look terrible, dear. Still wanting to kill my husband, I suppose? Something tells me that the recent war isn't the only reason that Hera is drunk, sadly. You know I seek revenge on Zeus. Can't say that I blame you. See? Brother, this is not between us, Hercules. You know, I gotta say, Herc's definitely compensating for something. See, Kratos could be a calm and reasonable person. You were always Zeus's favorite. The air on Olympus affects your thinking. Kratos is such a badass, not backing up a lick. Ha! Perhaps he did allow me. They got Kevin Sorbo for Hercules, which is so cool because he played Herc in Hercules The Legendary Journeys. This time I will destroy you. Call it my 13th and final labor. 13 is an unlucky number, Herc. I know Kratos has taken on Hades and Titans, but there's something special about him squaring off with a jacked human like her. Being so much smaller and still whooping ass is a sight to see. The second Kratos hits the stone, his theme starts playing. Since Kratos is actually the boss in all these fights, this is his boss theme. The Nelian Cestus use their strength to make the very earth tremble. Hands down, the best God of War weapon, just purely on the merit of its power, and finally letting Kratos just punch people all the time. Uh, uh, Kratos, do not leave me! Uh, uh, uh. uh, Kratos equally makes everyone around him suffer? Maybe? Ah, whatever. Uh, I guess in the finality of things, even the sex mini games have to be in a grander scale. Aphrodite being the goddess of love and beauty and all. Huh, look, there's the white tendrils of hope being placed inside. You know, maybe I was too harsh on God of War 4's puzzles. The ones here are no portal for sure, but just another good way to break up combat. The murderer of Gaia enters my tomb, Kronos! Oh sh! it's Grandpappy Kronos. Who saw this coming? I know it was you who killed her, Spartan. Who else could? The hubris of the Titans are wonderfully on full display at all times. Who else could? I don't know. You lost the first war to the gods, and the second one's not going great. Talk about a paper cut. <laughs> Fighting Kronos is the reason we love God of War. These giant spectacle fights will never get old. This was a marvel when I first saw it on the PS3, and still today holds a sense of scale not even God of War 4 rivals. I know the point of each game is very different. Mortal, you will suffer when my sight returns. If the decapitated head of a god dangling on Kratos' belt can blind you, what makes you think you have a chance to get ten? <laughs> the gore with Kronos was dialed up to eleven for whatever reason. I will make you into a bloody stain. I don't know why Vin Diesel thinks he can take on Kratos. Nothing is working. Not brutal, just gross. Kratos needs to get a checkup. Now that's brutal. And the worst model for anatomy possible ever, if you feel me. You guys know when you get a chip stuck in your throat? This is probably what it feels like for Kronos. And let us not forget to mention the hubris of the gods, too, thinking that they can take on Kratos. Yeah. 
Speaking of portal. Strength may have bested Hercules. But your simple mind will never find a way out. If I'm not mistaken, Spartans weren't only just the strongest military at the time, but also some of the brightest minds, no? Huh, making us use your environment. The lining up of all the pathways through perspective is neat. We're not gonna find the rock down here, are we? Oh, I was right. Talk about a root canal. Acupuncture practitioners be like, this shot always stands out to me every time I see it. The Labyrinth is an awesome final stretch before facing off against Zeus. A fun mix of puzzling platforming and ridiculously hard combat encounters. He told me if I did, he would hurt you the way he hurt my father. He won't. He told me he would kill you. He can't. A trap that would make Jigsaw proud. Hope is what makes us strong. It is why we are here. It is what we fight with when all else is lost. A little late to be throwing this theme into the game, but the final hour of the game really does make up for it. I like to imagine they were so focused on the new tech and making a spectacle of a conclusion to their franchise that this theme got a little lost. Which is completely understandable and doesn't diminish from the awesome game we got, but a reminder that we can only do so much in the time we have. I thought this was the callback to God of War 1, but like Bane said, That comes later! Pandora! Pandora! It's lovely every time we see the softer side of Kratos. I can only imagine how sweet he was to Calliope. In the darkness, the fires of hope will set us free. Pandora, no! You know why I'm here! I really enjoy Kratos' desire to save Pandora. I wish she was in the game sooner to develop this relationship more. But with Kratos latching onto her so quickly just shows how much he misses his little girl. Zeus changes threads to face off against Kratos, and my favorite part about this change is his fleece is on the opposite arm as Kratos. This has nothing to do with her! It has everything to do with her! Put her down! Kratos has been angry and rage-filled before, but this anger we get from him here is so much more potent. The facial animations, the cam work, and TC Carson make this the best Kratos has ever been to this point. Who saw a 2D fight coming from one of the phases of the Zeus boss battle? I sure as hell didn't. This has got to have something to do with Santa Monica being inspired by his addition to MK9. I think it's great. And what happened to regular consumer games having tough boss fights? Even on normal, Zeus can prove a tough as nails challenge. Nowadays, normal difficulty is just the new easy. And to get a challenge from the normal difficulty, we gotta go play games like Dark Souls and Neo. My point is, God of War was accessible and challenged us, even on the most popular difficulty levels, and that's a good thing. God damn does the score go so hard during this final fight. Having just the brass take the sole lead is awesome. It's a testament to these last two combatants left, the most powerful men in the world duking it out for the last time. And also, there are five composers on God of War 3. Stig Asmussen wanted to have all these different styles come together to create something truly special. This is something you never see in a film because of the way films are structured. They allow this huge collaboration between creators, and I think of the trilogy, the score here is the best. Legolas from Battle of the Fine Armies would like to see you. An unbiased camera of something large comes into frame will always be one of my favorite things to see. And look, guy is alive and regrowing her hand. How fitting that at the end of all things, these two are fighting in the heart of basically Mother Earth. And then kill her. <laughs> You've already tried that move before. Kratos is a warrior who learns. Revenge callback. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of Phantom Zeus, but I think since he's got the same colors going on as Fear Kratos, that Zeus is dead physically, and now Kratos has got to fight him emotionally and mentally. And in me, now there is. Now there is hope, because they are gone. And also, real exact callback to God of War 1. Obviously. So this is Kratos, of course, confronting all the wrong he has done and having to try to come to terms with it. There's talk of forgiving oneself and not perpetuating the cycle of violence. But the big revelation that I think Kratos sees here is all the pain and suffering stemmed from gods and titans. It wasn't the hope that Pandora instilled in him, but the realization that mortals live truer lives that makes him sacrifice himself at the end. 
So you can just keep punching again and again and again, and the game won't move on until you stop. I think that's awesome. Kratos can't move on until he drops the hatred and realizes the one thing he needs to do. And it's so cool that we, the players, have to go on that journey and realize it too. Locked deep inside of you, Kratos, is hope. And this isn't the end-all be-all reason Kratos changed so much in God of War 4. The hope was always in him even before he opened the box. So when he releases it to Greece, it doesn't matter. The father we see in Kratos in God of War 4 was the one that was always there at the core. But that got clouded with his vengeance and rage. What was it, Kratos? Hope is what makes us strong. It is why we are here. All I remember is what I have lost. Playing through this gets me so excited to play Ragnarok. The one thing that could bring Kratos back with his love for the innocent and hopeful. Seeing him lose control again is going to be amazing. Every single God of War game has had a different director. Cory came back for four, which is dope. But I think this is mind blowing because we've seen games have the same director and have their sequels fall short of their predecessor. But God of War is able to keep a high level of consistency with the characters and story that it feels like one big well-designed narrative. My vengeance ends now. Even though he killed Zeus, he can't forgive and live with himself for what he's done. He's the final god that must be killed. Talk about a tragic character. I was meant for me! They will not know what to do with it! A quick little line and we learn that Greece is gonna be alright. You disappoint me, Spartan. <clears throat> One last little fuck you to the last person in the world that broke his trust. Hey, we gotta keep it open just in case for a sequel. And thank god they did. So I noticed that I didn't offer up a conclusion for God of War 3, and that's a damn shame as it holds such a big place in my heart. I was under a lot of stress during the development of that video, believing I owed a company a million dollars and I thought everything was going to shit. It was a weird time in my life to say the least. Anyway, God of War 3 was the finale to put all of the finales to shame. To have a series just getting bigger and better with each release constantly one-upping itself is no easy task. Having the success that Santa Monica had is what all studios dream of. It goes to show what can happen when you release a polished game and ask players nothing more than the upfront price. I'm so delighted that Santa Monica is still sticking to these guns, even now releasing the Valhalla DLC for free. God of War 3 is gorgeous and still holds up today in all avenues. Graphics, gameplay, narrative, it's all there and such a blast to play through. There is a reason that I'm giving this trilogy a special treatment of a compilation video, and it's because they deserve it. If you haven't played the trilogy in some time, I would urge you to go back through it for the love of the game. I know when I get some free time, I'm going to go back through God of War 3 on the hardest difficulty because I hate myself and want to flip desks. Remember, everybody, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and one love another. Pizza.